This is Larry the Barberman and today I am with Ryan Cullen of Ryan Cullen here in Northern Ireland. You've probably seen Ryan on Instagram. He's kind of made a name for himself based on his ability to texture hair over and beyond the average barber stroke. Sorry, I take that back, Ryan. No, sorry. Men's hairstylist yeah. or men's hairdresser. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably uh, what I'd prefer to sort of bracket myself anyway. As a men's hairdresser? As a men's hairdresser as opposed to a barber kind of... Um, I suppose I don't really... Uh, I don't cliche the whole thing so much. I caught her. I mean, I'm a trained hairdresser, so I stem from that background. Um, I've done barbering courses before, but... What I do in my salon, I think, sort of is, amalg is an amalgamation of hairdressing and barbering. So I think it's more of a men's hairdressing kind of um, atmosphere and feel. So that's kind of what, okay. what I would call myself anyway. So the reason you became a men's hairdresser, if you like, is through the dissatisfaction of dressing ladies' hair. Is that right? Um, yeah, I would, I, would, I would say that's uh, partly correct, yeah. I started doing women's hair um, when I was um, 19 years old and it was something that I had a passion for I wanted to get into. Um, I also was, I, I mean I didn't solely just want to get into women's hair, I wanted to get into just the hair industry, the fashion industry and um, I started doing women's hair. Um, I was in a salon that sort of just sort of, it more so did women's, women it focused on women more than men. There were men come in, that came in, but it was more so a women's salon. So therefore, my focus was on women. Um, I, sl I slowly started building up a clientele with the male, with the, all the males that came in. And I found, I found that I actually um, preferred to do that. I don't know whether it was because um, maybe I get on with the men better than the women. Maybe I, maybe I like to chat more. Maybe it was more the men kind of bond that you have the, the camaraderie with, an, with, another, with another lad. Um, but I slowly, I slowly um, edged away from, the, from the, woman, the, the women's game and more so created a niche for myself in, in the city I work in, Uri, with doing more, more men. So that's kind, of, um, that's kind of how I started getting into men's hair. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the experience of coming to Ryan Cullen here, because I've kind of walked in and it's, for me as a Londoner, it's kind of got that Harley Street kind of private practitioner's feel about it with the staircase leading up and you've got your sofa here at the back with your, yeah. you know, your little soft tungsten lamp. <laughs> Tell me about the experience through well, your eyes and your words. The thing I wanted to create uh, in my salon was I wanted to make, I wanted to create an environment where a man could come in and feel like he's at, you know, like almost at, at the hairdressers. I wanted to make a more, I wanted to take a more hairdressing feel to the men's barber salon. So I wanted to focus on uh, each man. I'm appointment based, so that I think in turn uh, it results in more of a private kind of meeting with your barber because um, or your hairdresser, so that it's more um, focused on just yourself. So when you come in, you can have a seat. You wait your you wait for your appointment time. You can get a coffee. You can get a tea. You can get you know you can get a drink. Um, but more so I wanted to create a, an atmosphere where it felt more like a, a hairdressing salon as opposed to a, a barber shop where you walked in and you, you, you just joined the queue. I think it's more a personal feeling, it's more of a, I think it's more of a, you can create a close bond with your client that way a lot more. I think they, they know that when they come in they know um, that they have that time set for, with you and it's, um, it's, it's good you can strike up a really nice relationship with your client that way as well. Okay, so I want to talk about styles as I introduced you in the introduction that you're a texture specialist. Tell me where you think this came around yeah. or your skill or your ability to... Yeah, I think, um, I think when I started doing men's hair, I think I focused on more so possibly the finishing of a haircut more so than the actual cut. I mean, I look back at um, some of the work I, I did way back in the way back in the day, and, and I mean, it's it's refreshing for me to see like you know where you started out. My hair cutting wasn't unbelievable by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it was more the finishing kind of side of things. I uh, I focused on on the dressing out of the hair. I, th I suppose I came from a hairdressing background. 
Um, we wouldn't let a, a woman leave the, the salon with her hair, you know, any other, like, you know, it would have to be immaculate. They'd have to leave the shop with it looking really good. I do the same with, with the men. So this, the texture thing came out of um, the, the, the kind of the style at the time. I mean, it was, we're talking here 10, 10 years, 11 years ago, and it was all about that choppy, that choppy texture, that choppy spiky kind of feel, um, messy kind of, kind of finishing. And um, it was something I kind of exploited back in the day. And I, I, you know what, I started social media. I started putting pictures online and um, it done quite good. It done quite well. So that kind of styling kind of, kind of, kind of, I got labeled in a way that kind of, you know, the person who does all that texture kind of finishing. Um, so that's where that came from, Laurie, yeah, I think back in the day, yeah. And are you the type of guy to take your photos for Instagram with your telephone or do you, are you a SLR kind of guy? Um, yeah, I started out when I was using just my mobile phone. Um, it was the best thing we had back in the day. Um, I invested in a camera. So um, I would advise anybody watching this interview to go out, get a camera. If you, if you think anything of your work, if you want to really showcase the standard of work that you can do in your shop, um, buy a camera. Buy a decent camera, an SLR, or something that's gonna really um, pick up your pick up the details, yeah. Pick up your textures. Pick up the texture, yeah, absolutely. So, so I I have now a camera, and I actually focus a lot on. I really really like that. Um, I really like that side of the game. I really do. I really love the photography side of things. I mean, I love doing the haircut. I love dressing it out. I love making the client feel very very welcome, very good about themselves. But I also love. Um, going home and, and, and getting the pictures and looking through my pictures and picking the which, I mean, I'll take about 10 pictures of a haircut, maybe more, and I'll struggle to pick the one I like. But I love that side of things. I love that side of, um, of the game. Uh, the photography side of things is, um, is, I think it comes from our creative kind of, I think it comes from where we, where I think every, every barber or every stylist out there or hairdresser can, can safely say they're creatively minded. So it's just another form of art for us. Photography. Yeah, if you're not vis if you're not a visual person, then it's going to be very difficult yeah. to be a good barber or men's hairstylist. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to save you a little bit of time now, okay. every evening and every week. I think I'm going to probably save you about two hours of time with this next question. Yes. Tell us <laughs> how right, going? you achieve these uh, textures because I'm going to save you okay. quite yes. a lot, a few emails. Wait, yes, I get this question a lot. <laughs> Okay, so the finishing of all my haircuts, um, it's, 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 yes, I can, I can sit here and tell you about all the point cutting that you can do to create texture, all the feathering you can do, the, the removing bulk and keeping length and everything like that. I mean, everyone knows, every stylist knows how to cross section a haircut, how to um, graduate a haircut, square layers, everything like that. But if you want to create that texture, create that look, it's all about, it's all about visual um, creativity and the manipulation of the hair with these, t these, these are the biggest tools that I can um, suggest that you um, use your your hands. So um, get creative. Don't be afraid to use the correct products and manipulate the hair in creative ways with your fingers. Like I mean, with as simple as it's just dressing out. It's nothing more than um, placing the hair in the positions you like. You can do it real rough and ready, where it doesn't look like you've um, emphasized a lot of um, perfection on it or you can take it to the next level and really, really like be quite pernickety with where you want things to sit. And I mean, so yeah, it's all about placement of her with your fingers and with your hands and using your creative flair and your artistic flair. Is there any particular product to assist or aid you in these textures? The looks I go for, the kind of uh, finishes that I like um, are more kind of natural finishes. I suppose I don't really like um, if the haircut is over, over um, there's too much product in it. Um, it can. It, I think it tends to look. Um, it can tend to look tacky, if that's the right word to use. But I use. Um, I use a lot of like um, matte clay, maybe a texturizing dust, on hairspray, and those for me are the three best products that you can use to finish hair. Also, um, working product into the hair pre blow dry. So when the hair is damp, apply product to the hair texturizing sprays, um, maybe a soft kind of molding cream that that can um, that can dry into the hair and give it a bit of bit of um, rigidness. So when you dry it, 
it can sit in, in place. But those, for me, it's all about uh, keeping the haircut nice and natural and, and um, Okay, so other than catching you at a great British barber bash do, or the uh, sub project product of that, which is uh, modern barbering, how could someone get private tuition with you, for lack of a better phrase? Okay, so um, education is only something I really took part in um, this past, I say, year. Um, my first stage show was. Um, was last year, last February in Manchester at Pro Hair Live, and it was the first time I ever really cut her in front of an audience. So first, the first thing for me was obviously coming out of my comfort zone and cutting in front of people and being able to talk in front of people. And what came from that was then uh, being approached by Gary Spencer and the Great British Barber Bash about coming on board and doing some education. Um, I've really enjoyed doing that. I've really enjoyed meeting other other um, stylists across the UK and been able to share some tips and um, knowledge that I know, and that's been great. I, w I am going to extend my um, education and bring it privately to my salon, so it'll be quite private and close to home, because a lot of the education I do is is across the UK, and um, we've got some we've got some exciting trips this year coming. Um, in like um, overseas, Dubai for example, so that'll be really nice to um, broaden our horizons but I do want to bring um, education to to my base which is um, Ryan Cullen Hair so I want to, I, I do want to start doing that and I will start doing that. Okay and one other bit of education that I think the viewers of this interview may find helpful, you've got an Instagram following of over 60,000 so on top of being a you know, a uh, hairdressing influencer, you're an influencer on social media. Have you got any tips that you could share to indeed help other barbers and hairstylists reach these kind of numbers and become an influencer? I guess don't like be afraid. You? Yeah, don't be afraid of um, putting yourself out there. I mean, I started, <clears throat> I started um, putting pictures up online um, about maybe seven, eight years ago and took a bit of, I took a bit of um, flack off my friends for it. I mean, they were keeping me going about putting pictures of haircuts up online. But I mean, look where it's got me. It's got me a big following. I mean, um, it's got me a lot of, um, it's put my work on a pedestal, which is, which is amazing for me to, for the amount of people who see my work on a daily basis when I put my pictures up. I, I suppose the best thing to do is put your work out there. Don't be afraid of taking criticism. I mean, take criticism and take, take the positives from it. Don't get caught up in, in too much hate because I mean, it's going to get you nowhere. There's always going to be haters, so um, blank them out. Only ride that positive wave. Don't be, um, don't get caught up in negativity. So, I suppose just put yourself out there. Don't be afraid of what people think. I mean, uh, yeah. So just be, be positive. Be, don't be afraid. Yeah. And in, uh, social media has actually procured you some quite. Uh, influential kind of clients tell me how you've been hit up and some of the pit names if you want to name the names that you've been hit up by yeah i mean um i've got i have i've received some um some work outside of work if you like um from 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 quite big names i mean um from from tv stars from tv stars on on their shows to to footballers and i mean it's it's amazing, like social media has done this for me, so I can't thank social media enough. I, I, I mean, I do want to emphasize also that it's about having a busy shop also. Social media is something that's great, that got me a lot of work outside of um, my shop, but I suppose my shop is the most important thing to me. The people that I cut outside of work are um, like Liverpool football players. I mean. For me, that's a dream coming true because I am a Liverpool fan, and it's it's something I I can't comprehend. But I'm honoured, and I'm I'm gonna um, for for the foreseeable future, for as long as they want me to cut the hair, it'll be great. Uh, and if anyone else wants to get a haircut, drop me a DM. <laughs> it's no problem. I, it's exciting for me to go meet these people, these uh these stars. So it's great, and it's it's nice for me to uh yeah to sort of broaden my horizons and and put my work out there. Yeah make the brand a bit bigger. So Ryan, when talking to you off camera, it seems to me that you've come nowhere 
close to reaching your potential, what would you say in your own words or in your own mind would be the next step in the field of here for you? Okay, I mean, uh, it's quite hard to, um, it's quite hard to question that, to answer because um, I just live every day as it comes. I'm very, um, I'm very, one, I'm one of them people who I love working hard and I love, I love doing what I do. Um, I don't know what the future is going to hold. I just, I hope it does hold a lot of, um, a lot of good things. Um, I, so I guess I'm just going to keep working hard because so far it's worked for me, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm progressing quite, uh, quite nicely and in, in, in within this industry of, I've become quite well known in the hairdressing industry and for me it's just about um yeah keep just keeping working hard and keeping your feet like keeping your feet on the ground and, and and looking after the person sitting in your chair i mean on the social media front uh, i mean i'm gonna keep doing that and i mean if that keeps um keeps progressing like in the way that it that it is i mean who knows what what i, what I might do maybe there could be more salons there could be um working towards um, bigger things, but at the moment it's just, it's going really good and I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing. Ryan Cullen, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy diary, because we've had to kind of alter, or you had to alter your diary it's a little good. bit to give us this interview, so yes, I appreciate it. Pleasure. It's a pleasure, Laurie, and thank you very much for coming down. It was my pleasure. Yep. I had to come down and see you. Good on you. <laughs>